I am Benjamin McKinley, and I play in Booch Gibbons, and I'm 13 years old. Kelly McKinley, I'm 19, and I play Maddie Jackson. I'm Michael McKinley, I'm 14 years old, and I played uh, Williams. Sherman Williams, who is actually Bill Jackson. I'm Gabrielle McKinley, I'm 15 years old, and I play Annie Pinkerton. Anna Grace McKinley, 17 years old, and I play Deputy Judy. Caleb McKinley, I'm 21 years old, and I play uh, Sheriff Buckman and John Novell. This is Lydia McKinley. She is 12 years old and she played... What did you play? Deputy Lizzie. This is Ruth McKinley. She's 7 years old and played Kayleen Neville. I'm Naomi McKinley and I'm 9 years old and I played Amelia Neville. I'm Joel McKinley. I played Jake Pookie and I'm 11 years old. I'm Joy McKinley and I'm 10 years old and I played Lucas Flip. Usually we just play. Play? Mm -hmm. Usually, because we're usually not in filming. You are. No, I've, I'm only in three scenes. Besides the interview. Well, five. Because you're in the interview, you're in the doctor scene, and you're in the with three. <laughs> it's five. We get in the car really fast and we're like, like busy and like, oh no! And so we're like, I'll rush here. And then when we get to the house, we are we are not allowed upstairs because it's messy. We get well, in the car and drive for about 45 minutes. It depends on whose house we're how filming how in. Because when we're going, going to their house. I'm good at the film day, but I always end up being bad. <laughs> Yeah. It takes us 10 to 15 minutes to set up the equipment. It takes longer to set up the people. It depends on the person. Fun, hectic, busy, lots of work afterwards, constantly being told to do things. A typical film day for me is a lot of holding the equipment and running the sound stuff and then acting as well. And it's A lot of times it's very cold and we're constantly telling people to go away and be quiet. And it's fun but hectic. Most of the time I just play with the other kids. Very hectic. Normally I'm chasing kids down, trying to get them to come say their lines, uh, acting multiple people's parts, trying to show people how they're supposed to act, uh, running from here to there, running the sound equipment, going and eating lunch, just all over the place. I'm exhausted after each film day. It goes grand. Depending on the day, the setup time is different. Um, sometimes it only takes like 15 to 30 minutes. Usually if it's a scene that has to be constructed, I usually construct it the, the few days before and then fix it up on the day of. So we finish the touch-ups on the scene and get all the equipment and people ready and then we start filming. Um, and then once we're done, it's just to get everything cleaned up and packed. Well, our typical film day starts two or three days before when we have to try to figure out what food You're we're right. going to cook for everyone. Or we drive. You drive. Or I drive. Yeah. I remember a lot of things. Caleb and Joel were doing the abandoned house scene when they were wrestling. Caleb fell down right on top of an ant nest, and when he got up, he said something stung him, and I knew what it was. <laughs> My memorable experiments when was when I. <laughs> I remember when Caleb was wrestling with Joel, and he said he had. I a know more about that than you. Back and he was tickling him. There are so many of them. That's not interesting. It depends on what's memorable. Uh, fun memorable or not fun memorable? Playing on cold, wet, moss-covered concrete outside the Garda station. When we were filming the scene where, on Bruch Gibbons' end, they were all these kids were walking by, waving bells and dressed up as Santa Claus, and we were having a hard time. And we almost thought we couldn't film there that day, but we did get to. They stopped going on their Santa walk after a while. It was fun. You weren't even there. How do you? I look like Santa Claus. Probably the most memorable experience for me is when we were filming at the bed and breakfast. Um, Micah and I were standing out in the hall and 
we were filming Annie Pinkerton in the bedroom next door and this guy comes running up the stairs and says hello to us and I shushed him because I was so used to shushing Micah the entire time and later we found out that he was actually the son of the lady who owns the bed and breakfast. I remember sitting by the wall in the freezing cold trying to keep warm in the alley in the estate where we filmed where the goons were attacking the mare. Well, when I had to do my scenes, it was freezing cold outside. My fingers went numb, like I couldn't feel them at all. And when I got back in the car and tried to heat them up, I felt like I had ants all over my hands. <laughs> and then there was the time we were filming in the park and uh, it's too embarrassing to even talk about, so I just won't say. Uh, we were getting right at finishing up a scene and a group of teenagers came walking over and this one guy said he wanted to be in the scene and uh, grabbed the microphone from Timothy. And uh, Gabrielle's face was a memorable experience that I will never forget. <laughs> she was absolutely horrified, but she couldn't go anywhere because she was tangled up in sound wires. And so she just gave me this look of horror. And I reached out and grabbed the microphone from the guy and said, um, this is very expensive equipment. We don't let anyone touch it. And that became a well-known line from then on whenever anyone tried to touch the microphone. When we were out at the bad guy's hideout, um, we had to film the a few scenes multiple times um, and trying to get the, the dogs in the scene was interesting, trying to get them to do what we wanted because they'd, they'd always want to go do something else and so we had to make them look natural. One way that we got them to um, look at the ground and look like they're searching for something was we brought some cat food along and would throw it on the ground and have them look for it and try to find it. We had the privilege of filming at this lovely B&B &B, and I got to be the hostess there. Um, I went to open the door and it was locked and I couldn't get it open and then everyone started laughing at me <laughs> and I still couldn't get it open and I didn't know what I was going to do. And Caleb had to come over and tell me what to do and it still didn't work. And eventually though, with a lot of wiggling and finagling with the lock, it came open. It's probably my memorable experience was the day we filmed the shooting scene at the Garda station. I thought that was exciting. So, but I had to go and ask permission to film a shootout outside a Garda station. I wasn't too sure the guards would appreciate that. And I thought we'd probably be told no, so, but I had to go and I approached the lady and she looked at me like I was quite odd because I'm coming up with some strange question about bringing a bunch of children to film a shooting scene with guns and blood and things. <laughs> and so she was very sweet and they approved it and I thought that was a really cool scene. I was wondering what all the passerbys in town thought of the shootout. I, li I liked her because she was like me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Neither was you. <laughs> she was like me. Well, I thought that my character was really good besides one thing. I really wanted to be a funny bad guy, but they wouldn't let me. So I almost cried and punched somebody in the nose. And that would have caused <laughs> that we didn't do the filming. And I'm glad I didn't do that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get that piece of chocolate I got. Well, well, actually, I, I, I well, actually, I thought that her character, her character, was really disagreeable, and that we were like best and worst buddies, like at the same time, because I was just my character was great and her character was weird. <laughs> so, well, I think just uh, the just, same that you do, really. Yes, but mine was great and yours was weird. When I first thought about Annie Pinkerton, I thought she was going to be nice. But then when I when I read the story Caleb wrote, she was very rude to the secretary. And I was very surprised. But now I'm used to it and I like it how it is. It's more like myself than uh, other characters I've played. And it was just it's just easier to play him. 
Um, I really liked being Deputy Judy. It was a little different than my normal personality, but it wasn't so strange that I had to really think about acting. It was mainly just being me, but there were a few things that were a little hard to change. I didn't like having to act so ridiculous all the time. My character is the most fantastic character in the entire movie. I'm very proud of myself. I really liked my character. It was fun, 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 fun. I enjoyed playing my character. Um, it was a little different than what I normally do because I was trying to act two people in the film and it was difficult to change from what I normally act. So I had to really concentrate on trying to do something different for each character. We were called the buffoons. We were called the goons. Was that good? I got pink the tin and poker tin. I didn't get any other than Caleb calling me Willie. I, I was given, sort of given the nickname Deputy Juicy and Fizzy, um, and then, so yeah, it was Juicy and Fizzy, and then you added them. Uh, also people called me Deputy Dizzy. Or remember what he said. <laughs> Ruth's is Gibbons to face, and mine is, um, <laughs> oh, uh, Mine oh, is, what was it? well, two clockwork. That's in the one of the phone calls. When uh, we were getting captured, and I said, can I watch TV for the last time? And he was like, I want to watch TV for the last time! And so that's really my favorite. My favorite line of dialogue is, I always obey the law. Well, my favorite line of dialogue is Gabrielle's part when she says, you're not pointing that at me, are you? Or should I call you Bill Jackson? Yeah, I'd say that's one of them. I always obey the law. No, you don't. I really liked the um, scene where Joel uh, gets burned and he has to scream and yell, that's me, you're burning, put it out. The mayor was talking about um, the coffee shops. It's just funny because Kelly doesn't like coffee. Um, line two, when Joy says that she doesn't know anyone named Bass, and when uh, Joel and Joy are walking out front before delivering the ransom note, I always obey the law. None. I disliked the phone call scene. The scene where I didn't get a donut. <laughs> Maybe the one where I had to be the homeless guy because it was really, really cold there. Was, well, when we, we were, well, I was at the abandoned house because it was so cold. And that's the only reason I ever had and I ever will have because that's the most, the scene I dislike the most. Do you have any objections to that remark? Yes. Yes. I disliked filming the scenes at the abandoned house because cars kept going by. And whenever the cars went by, they went so slowly because people were staring at us and they always honked their horns. I probably disliked that one the most too because I didn't ever get to do anything very much. And it was always raining and cold. I, I didn't like acting the scenes where we were sitting in the office of the police station because it's just sitting there and talking and it was really hard to keep a straight face. My scenes, because they were so freezing cold. The scene where we're going to raid Maddie Jackson's house because it's it was raining, and when we were coming up to the house, we had to we had to go out there about three times to get the scene correct, and we kept getting wet, and water kept coming in the house. is getting kidnapped. My favorite scene is um the phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't say that. Well, I meant one of the phone calls. The explosion scene. 
Miss Pinkerton and the Sheriff. Sherman Williams was getting shot. Um, the scene outside the Garda station where I got shot, and then probably the scene, the uh, the scene before that. Sherman Williams pulls the gun on Sheriff Buckman and Annie Pinkerton, and then the two scenes after that where I get to shoot him. I like the scene where I capture Joel because I like to, because I got to run into him. The jo I like Joy's scene where she's talking to Bruce Gibbons and uh, he says, uh, Gibbons to base, go tell boss something, something, something. And she says, okay, but I'm Lupus Flip. I don't know anyone named Base. Oh, there was another one that I liked where uh, I was talking on the phone. Well, you're not supposed to know it's me, but yeah, it was me. I was talking on the phone and I had to get mad at Joel and so I banged the table. That one was funny to do. My hand hurt though after that because I banged the table so many times. Um, as we were getting ready to go raid Maddie Jackson's house because um, we were in the police office and the building we were in had um, communication things between all the rooms or like telephones um and we got to use those to help direct everything and that the intercom there helped especially when we had to do uh things all at the same time like when we were all leaving the rooms to go raid maddie jackson's house or in other scenes there where um someone had to come out of a room at a certain time during the scene. Uh, Grace as the secretary, she looks so sharp. It, yes. The camera angles were just so professional and she was so natural that I really enjoyed that. I like when the mayor got attacked with pillows. Uh, very, 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 very good. I think that it was really good. It's nice, yeah. It's good. I like it! Oh, is that what we're interviewing about? <laughs> oh, I thought we were just asking questions for no reason. It should be regarded as the best made movie in history. I think it's the best film that was ever made. I love the storyline. Best movie ever. Do you know why? Because I'm the best character in it. And if you didn't have me, you wouldn't have a movie. Overall, I thought it was very good. Um, the filming was good. And I like a lot of the scenes and other things that were done in it. Well, it, there was one morning I had this idea because I'd been watching um, Micah and Joy, who were playing with Caleb, they were calling him Sheriff Buckman, and they said, said they were stealing Sheriff Buckman's gold, and they called themselves Brooch Gibbons and Lupus Flip. So that's how the idea started. I mentioned it to Gabrielle, and it just grew from there. Caleb's the set builder person, so this question is for him. What was the easiest set to create? The clapperboard. We use it in every scene. scene, but we use it in every scene. The phone booth, because there wasn't very much to do with that one. The prison, um, because we had to clean it out, and then I had to come up with a way to design it, and then design the door to make it work how we wanted without catching and then the bed and other things in it. The bed and breakfast scenes were probably the easiest ones to film because everything was already set up. There was not really much to do and all the little ones were out of the way. The scene that had Joel and Joy in it, oh and Micah, were the hardest. Also the scenes that we had lots of vehicles in, like out by the bad guy's hideout. We always had to pause and wait for the cars to go by. Anna Grace is distress over the poor little rock. We put a rock on the floor where John Novell was um, being held so that Anna, when Anna Grace went in, she knew where to look. 
so it didn't look funny. Every time I walked around the corner, all that popped into my mind was I was going in there to have pity on a little rock that we had put on the floor. So she had to walk in that room like seven or eight times before she could do it with a straight face. A pitiful face. From where Sherman William pulls the gun to being shot. Yeah, those two scenes both. Yeah, those two scenes both. Yeah.